What's up, lovers of whiskey and watchers of YouTube? I am the malt activist, as it says so right over here, proving once and for all that there is no other malt activist than yours truly. And that is why today I am transforming from malt activist to Mr. Worldwide. These are my top 10 whiskies from 10 different countries. So the cool thing is, when I thought I'd do this video, I looked at my shelf and I said, oh, I may have maybe about, you know, seven or eight different whiskeys from different parts of the world that are not Scotland. So I said, okay, that's great. But I wanted to round them off to an even 10, right? YouTube algorithm. Um, so what did I do? I sent out a little feeler in my whiskey, uh, whiskey club uh, asking for members if they had any non-scotch whiskies that they'll be willing to share with me for the sake of this video and my very good friend and shout out to Lijesh, Lijesh CK uh, came through and he said here you go I have two whiskies in fact that I can share with you one is a German whiskey and I was like whoa that's amazing German whiskey awesome uh, you're in and he said the other one is a French whiskey and I was in two minds about the French whiskey because I was like I'm not I'm not 100% sure I'll be able to pronounce it but I said what the hell French whiskey is a French whiskey and let me get my hands on it so I got both the bottles and I sat down to review and I said I am going to I am going to review the French whiskey first well at least share the French whiskey first with you and uh, the one that I have in my hand is called I hope you can see it it's called the Michel Couvreur. I looked it up, that's exactly how it's pronounced, so no need to put anything in the comments. Uh, this whiskey is a Michel Couvreur, and the first and the first line on this label says distilled in Scotland. <laughs> My first non-Scotch whiskey on this list is distilled in Scotland. Oh man. So I was gutted. I was like, "Oh shit! I can't! I can't! I can't obviously put uh, 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 a Scottish distilled whiskey on my list of international whiskeys, and from this one from France." Anyway, so I did a little bit of research, and I found out that this particular series it's called the Overaged, right? So the Overaged is all whiskeys that are over twelve years old. Uh, they're all single malt whiskeys. And what the Michel Couvreur company does is they will take, uh, I'm guessing, casks uh, or, or spirit from Scotland, and then they mature these. Uh, uh, they mature the spirit in Burgundy. It says in <laughs> uh, by maturation with sherry oak casks in our Burgundian caves. So apparently, it's matured in caves in in Burgundy. So sherry casks matured in in caves in Burgundy and this particular bottle that I have in my hand is is a vatted malt or a blended malt so it's a blend of different single malt whiskies so I was like you know what I am not going to include this um, on uh, uh, on the list because it's you know it's an imposter uh, but I was curious because I'd never ever drunk a Michel Couvreur before and so I uh, I took off the wax Wax seal and found out that it actually has uh, a wine cork in it. So it doesn't have a cap, it had a wine cork. So I had to get my little fantastic contraption out. No, this is not a torture instrument. This, as you can see, is my wine opener. And so I managed to uncork, uncork this bottle. And I said, you know what? Even if it doesn't make the video, it's fine. I get to taste it. And let me tell you something. When I when I nosed and tasted this whiskey, I realized what an absolute cracker of a dram this is. I know it's not French French, but my God, 
God, this is fantastic. So while technically not a French whiskey, I mean, it is a product of France. That's what it says on the label, that it's a product of France. So yeah, produced in France, it says we are produced in France. Uh, and so while I appreciate that fact that this is produced in France, I know this is not a French whiskey. However, it is absolutely gorgeous. And if you get your hands on a Michel Couvreur, do try it. This is my first experience trying a Michel Couvreur. And I have to tell you, I am very, 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 very happy with this. And especially this series, the overaged. The overaged is all, I think, minimum 12 years old, all of them, and then kind of blended together or matured in sherry cask, in caves in Burgundy, and to produce this. Woo! This is quite stunning. Very, very nice. No off notes. Bottled at 52% ABV. I love everything about it. Uh, as you would, uh, it's basically what a good sherry whiskey should be. And this is what it is. And I think it's masterfully blended. Uh, uh, I, there's no literature around this, so I have no idea which distilleries this is from. I think it's mildly peated. There's, I get a sense of it, but not too much. So I'm guessing a lot of Speyside Highland whiskeys, uh, distillates actually, that were taken from Scotland, uh, taken to Burgundy, uh, matured in sherry cask, inside caves, and bottled uh, for, uh, for our drinking pleasure. And I'm so happy to have discovered uh, uh, a good Michel Couvreux. Uh, and so yeah, so while technically not a French whiskey, I am going to include it on the list only because how awesome it is. So apologies if, uh, if you have any, uh, if you have any uh, purists out there, but hey, it's my list and I can do whatever the hell I want. So my first, the first whiskey on my list is a French whiskey that is not even technically French, but it is absolutely awesome. My second whiskey is all the way from Germany. And again, thanks to my very, very good friend, Lejesh, this is the St. Killian. Yep, can you see that? I hope you can see that. There it is, yeah, St. Killian. So St. Killian is an hour's drive from Frankfurt, and it's uh, apparently the largest German whiskey distillery. And what I have here with me is something actually quite special. So this is not part of the core range. This is something I think you get to fill uh, at the distillery, which I believe Lijesh would have done. That's why he has this bottle. So it's a double maturation, uh, PX and Oloroso. Uh, I'm guessing it's a re-rack because it has a cost number on it. So I'm guessing first in PX, then in Oloroso. Distilled 18th January 2017, bottled 16th October 2020. What? 16th October 2021? This is like two weeks old. Oh my word, I had no idea. Yes, Lijesh was traveling and I think he mature, uh, he uh, he bottled this at the distillery on that date, which is less than two weeks ago. This is probably the freshest whiskey I will probably ever have. It's a two week old whiskey. Uh, it comes in this awesome, cute, look at that. What a beautiful bottle this is. Um, uh, looks like a still, as you can see, this is a brand new bottle, which Jesh was very kind to let me let me uncork for this video. I owe you one, sir. And there you go, much better. Yeah, look at this cute bottle. And I also like the fact that it has these plastic, plastic corks which will not decay or, or crumble. This whiskey is about four and a half years old, matured in PX and Oloroso. <laughs> Um, distilled in Germany. <laughs> so yes, this is 100% made in Germany, distilled uh, and matured and bottled uh, all the way in Germany. So uh, not an imposter like our French cousin before this, but um, again, wonderfully sherry. There are no off notes. Uh, this is bottled at 58.2%. I'm guessing cost strength. 
Yeah, quite salty, quite meaty. Uh, and this, I believe, is a peated whiskey, as you can tell from that X peated whiskey. But quite mildly peated, so not heavily peated. Yeah, very nice, no off notes. A bit oaky as well, but what you'd expect uh, from a good shared whiskey belies its very, very young age. You know, four and a half is a baby. Four and a half is a baby, but it's, uh, they're doing something right in Germany. After a very long time, it's doing something right. No, no, I'm kidding. Um, so yeah, German engineering, uh, German engineering, Scottish passion, and I believe that's what you get, and that's what's on their website. So, my, uh, my first official whiskey on this list is this whiskey from Germany, from the St. Killian uh, Distillery. Uh, and yeah, I love it. There you go. I've decided to stay in Europe and so my next whiskey is from England. That's right, it's an English whiskey and no, it is not the English whiskey company. This is the Bimber Distillery. And I recently had a tasting with the guys from Bimber and these are very, very young whiskeys. I think they're three years and a day, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, the, this one that I have in my hands is, uh, is a single cask. It says cask number 12. I hope you can see that. Bottle number 14. And this was bottled 27th May 2020. So just a few months old. And this is matured in an ex-bourbon cask. And I have to tell you, at three years, three years and a day, this is this is quite spectacular. I have a bunch of other bimbers with me. Some are uh, in uh, sherry oak. Uh, I have some in a rechart cask, and I have another blend as well called the apogee, if I'm not mistaken. Beautiful spirit. Belies his very young age. In fact, let's see if we can get a taste. This is non-chill filtered. This is no coloring added. Ooh, lovely, very sweet, very candy. And um, yeah, love it. Limited single cost release. So yes, um, uh, there, there's many good distilleries uh, in in uh, in England, including the English Whiskey Company, of course. Uh, then there's the Lakes Distillery that's just opened up. Uh, in in fact. Uh, one of my very close friends is um, uh, is an investor in the Lakes Distillery. Uh, it's uh, I think a gentleman by the name of Paul Curry started it. Uh, his father started Aaron, so there's very good uh, pedigree. I think they just uh, very recently launched their single cask and it sold out at a fantastic price. And the only reason I I can't include it because I've not yet tasted a Lakes whiskey. So uh, the only option I have is this one but it's a damn good option the bimber bimber distillery i really really like it um, like i said uh matured it uh, matured for three years and a day and uh, belies its very young age so yes english whiskey bimber my next whiskey also from europe this time from Ireland is this magnificent, absolutely stunning red breast, 12 years old, bottled at 57.7% ABV. And this is, I think this is my first Irish whiskey that I tried very, very long time ago and it absolutely completely blew, blew me away. And I was like, oh my God, I'm in love. And then I started getting, oh no, of course Jameson was my first Irish whiskey. I think this was my first, but this is a, this is a single pot still. It says not a single malt. Ah, whatever. Um, this is my first red breast. There you go. This is the first red breast I tried. Uh, and at 12 years old, served at cost strength. It was just ooh, absolutely perfect. I loved every second of it when I was trying it. And I think you should too. If you have it, it is an absolutely gorgeous whiskey. Of course, there are other good Irish distilleries out there. Um, Connemara. Um, green spot, um, 
the guys who do Jameson, of course, uh, Teeling. Teeling is another wonderful distillery. So, but my favorite from Ireland is this particular red breast, 12 years old, served at Costrang. It changed my life as far as Irish whiskeys are concerned. And if you haven't tried it, I think you should get your hands on it. They have a 15 year old, which is uh, equally amazing, though that's at a lower strength. So I highly, highly suggest that you go and get yourself this 12 year old at Costrang. Ooh! Let's jump over the pond and head over to our American cousins on the other side. And I have to tell you, I have been a fan of bourbons my entire life, entire whiskey drinking life. It can't be my entire life, my entire whiskey drinking life. And I really, really love bourbons and I love the way they taste and I love everything about them. And I fell in love with whiskey partly because I was in love with bourbons. And one of the whiskeys that completely blew me away and changed my life and I keep saying that a lot changed my life but I really mean it is this George T stag I was obsessed even before even before I drank it I read about the George T stag I wanted I, I knew it existed and it was just so hard to get your hands on this but finally I did and I was not disappointed and while this is at a huh, meager 64.6% .6 ABV my first experience with the George T. Stag, uh, I forget what year it was, but it was a 71.4% ABV alcohol by volume. Boom! And it tasted absolutely amazing. However, this is not my favorite whiskey or my favorite bourbon from the US. My number one favorite whiskey from the United States of America is the Parker's Heritage Collection. This is an absolutely stunning whiskey. Again, very hard to find. As you can see, this comes in at an eye-watering, I hope you can see that, ah, it's written, 69.7% ABV, 139.4 proof, and oh, there you go, there you can see it, there it is, 69.7, see that, 69.7% ABV, this is not for the faint-hearted, please keep this stuff away from children and cute animals, because it will destroy and blow up their heads, yes. I love this Parker's Heritage. It is one of my favorite whiskeys in the whole world. And um, I love a lot of, I love so many bourbons that have come out of the US, but this one just holds a very, very special place in my heart. Also because I think it was one of the first really expensive bourbons that I had bought and I had no idea what, why a bourbon would be that expensive, but I realized why when I drank it and it is gorgeous, it's stunning and uh, I know there's no way you can get your hands on a George T. Stag uh, and even Parker's Heritage these days are so hard to come by uh, and so expensive. So um, I feel bad including it on this list, but it is what it is. It is my favorite, favorite whiskey from America. Let's go up to Canada. And from Canada, I have the Alberta Premium. This is a cost strength rye bottled at 66% ABV. Man, these North Americans, oh, they don't play around, right? They're like, this is what you're going to drink. You are going to burn the inside of your intestines and your stomach lining and, and you will thank us for it because these whiskeys are so flavorful. Especially rye whiskeys. I am a sucker for high strength rye whiskeys. The spicier it is, the, the higher the strength it is, oh, that just, you know, just ticks off all, all the boxes for me. So, yes, Canadian whiskeys. Again, there's very, very good Canadian whiskeys out there, but the one that I like, the one that I prefer, is this awesome cast strength rye from Alberta Distilleries. Mmm, so good. How about we go all the way east and go down to Australia, home of the new, new age whiskeys that are coming out and such stunning drams from Australia. Uh, one of my favorite whiskeys is Lark's. Uh, another one is Sullivan's Cove that I have here. This is a single cast bottling. However, the one whiskey that I fell in love with and I swore that I would I would do anything in the world to get my hands on another bottle and I've not been able to. So if so there's somebody from Australia listening to this, please, please, please get me the Overeem. Overeem 
port cask matured that's bottled at 60 percent that's the whiskey i want it is an absolute stunning 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 dram it reminds me of why everything is good in this world and i'm having such a hard time locating that whiskey and trying to get it so if there's anyone from australia here please help me find that whiskey and get it to me uh, i will owe you a debt of gratitude and a big ass shout out on this channel uh so whatever it is i can do i'll do it but just get hold of that whiskey for me if you can or if you know someone in australia that would really really help but yes the overream port cask matured bottled at 60 percent is my number one australian whiskey and it's absolutely stunning Mwah! i love it we can't have a global list without japanese whiskies and this one is really, really easy. My favorite Japanese whiskey in the whole world is the Yamazaki, 25 year old. Yes, I am one of the lucky few in the world who have this bottle and I am grateful uh, that I did what I did to get a hold of this uh, when I did, when it wasn't absolutely crazy. And I'll be honest, I bought this for 300 pounds. 300 pounds I paid for it, like $500, eight, eight years ago, something like that. It's now selling for, I don't know, 5,000 pounds or something silly like that. And yes, this is not opened because it's my only bottle and I'm just trying to figure out when, when I will open it. Probably when I, probably on the day I die, <laughs> I'll drink the entire bottle. Um, no, because I've been lucky enough to procure a couple of samples uh, to taste this and it is, oh. Stunning. Stunning is not the word. This is one overhyped whiskey that uh, that matches the hype. You know what I'm saying? So yes. So for my Japanese whiskey, undoubtedly it has to be this Yamazaki 25. The 18 is uh -uh, is okay. I like the 12. Miyagikus are also very nice, as are the Nikas. But for me, from the house of Suntory, the Yamazaki 25. Next, we head over to Taiwan. And Taiwan has one distillery, it's called the King Car Distillery, and it produces a whiskey called Cavalan. And I have here in my hand the Solist series. The Cavalan Solist series are roughly five years old, single cask, cask strike whiskeys, uh, heavily, heavily matured in uh, very, very active casks. As you can see from this color, it's almost black, it's like, black like my t-shirt uh so very very active cost uh this one is woo bottled in 2012 so yeah i got this 10 years ago i guess and it's an absolute stunner of a dram i fell in love with it it is gorgeous it is beautiful uh Cavalan in general is an absolutely stunning distillery and uh, they have a lot of great whiskeys um but my favorite from taiwan is this Cavalan Solist series uh, that's bottled at cast strength and heavily matured in uh, different kinds of wine casks. My list wouldn't be complete without the powerhouse that is Amrut Distilleries. And from that distilleries, I think probably my most favorite whiskey is this Amrut Portanova, that's right, bottled at a fantastic 62.1% alcohol by volume. This is a whiskey I think finished off in port, uh, port casks of, uh, after a good maturation in first field bourbon. Uh, this you will notice is, if you know anything about Amrut whiskeys, is that this is an older bottling. I am not very happy with new bottlings of the Portanova or the Intermediate Sherry which is again, another fantastic whiskey. But in my opinion, the best whiskey to come out of India and from Amrut is this particular Portanova that I'm talking about. And I'm talking about the old school batches. 
there are some very accomplished distilleries in India, including Paul John and Rampur. But for my money, it will always, always, always be Amrut for their innovation, for that exceedingly high level of quality whiskeys that they produced. Uh, and from there, it was very hard for me to pick what is my favorite, but I think I finally narrowed it down to the Sport Nova, which, and if you can get your hands on the old school, uh, old school batches of the Port Nova, oh, you will thank me. You'll be like, dude, come on. And finally, we make our way to Scotland. That's what you've been waiting for. And I, wow, I had to think about this a lot, but I think finally I've made the right decision, which is my favorite whiskey from Scotland. I have a lot of Port Ellens that I love. I have a lot of Lefroix and Ardbegs that I love. I have a lot of whiskeys that I love from Scotland, but ultimately I think one of the greatest whiskeys ever made is the Balvenie Ton 1401. I have with me, I think it's the batch eight or four, batch number eight, that's right. And I have an open bottle of this and it is one of the most stunning whiskeys I've ever drank ever in my life. Just perfectly sherry, just a perfect oak and this rose water and rosewood. It is, it is a testament. It is a testament to Sir David Stewart, who's been producing Balvini for such a long time. Um, I think he's retired now and uh, wow. This, this, this Balvini is just stunning, stunning, stunning. And again, unicorn, hard to come by, uh, very, very expensive. And I'm lucky I got it when I did and when I did and you know, at the prices that I did, uh, it's absolutely crazy now. So yeah, so my favorite whiskey from Scotland, the Balvini Ton 1401. If you can find it, if you can get your hands on it, geesh, you just gotta do that. So there you have it, my my 10 whiskeys from 10 different countries from around the world. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, give it a share. Please subscribe if you haven't subscribed. That means a lot. Uh, I will constantly be putting out cool content like this. Thank you for joining me for this whiskey video. I'm the Malt Activist. Until next time, peace.